<laughs> Hi everyone, it's Kaylee, and welcome back after a long hiatus to Otome Tuesday. And today we're going to be playing Dream Daddy. <laughs> I know it's been a while since uh, I've done an Otome Tuesday, but I, I've been so... Um, excited for this game to come out, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to to bring Atome Tuesday back. So let's start a new game. For anyone who knows me, you know I love dating sims and visual novels and that kind of thing. Dad! Ugh. Dad, wake up! Um, let's pretend to be dead. I let my tongue hang out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad, this hasn't worked on me since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda, this is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Dad. <laughs> Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Build that dad. <laughs> and by brush your teeth, you mean build that dad. Okay, so... Uh, what body type should I have? I like... I want to be a thick dad. <clears throat> but, uh... Yeah, that's... I, I love this game. I love that, um... You can kind of ostensibly play as a trans dad if you want. Like, they have binder tops. Uh... <laughs> you can be really hairy or kind of less hairy. Or you can get rid of the hair altogether. Um... You know what, I don't think I'm going to do body hair, because uh, I'm not a very hairy person. None of the men in my family are very hairy. So, i got to represent my thick dads. Let's see, what shape head should I have? Oh, they don't have a giant fat head like I have. That's pretty close. I have a, I have a heart-shaped face. I'm going to make myself in dad form. My dad sauna, if you will. So, of course, I have to have purple hair. <laughs> There's Goku hair. Or, excuse me, Space Warrior hair. There's some cute hairstyles. I like that. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go for the man bun because if I were a man, I would have like beautiful hair that I would wear in a ha man bun all the time, and it would it would drive everyone crazy. They would love it. Oh, I kind of want to do the big show. <laughs> senpai, maybe then senpai will notice me. I kind of like the hard eyes too. It's over 9,000! <laughs> Actually, there's not that many eyes that look very good, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, I don't know about you guys, but I love this. I'm gonna be anime as shit. Alright, nose. I have, like, a little round piggy nose. A button nose. Oh, I love Roman noses. I love Greek noses. Ugh. Hawk noses. Love them all. Sorry, I have a weird obsession with noses. Um, wide nose. Nah. Rumple nose. I guess that's the closest to mine. Because I do have like a little button nose with forward-facing piggy nostrils. Oh, ooh. 
<laughs> that just looks so funny to me. Aw, that's, that's kind of cute. I actually kind of like that. Oh, you can give your dad lipstick. <gasps> oh my gosh. I wish they had just straight up, like, black lipstick. Oh, that's pretty close. I might have to do the, the purple lipstick, though. Yes. Oh, so sexy, so dad. <laughs> I would, I, you know, no shade to, to dudes who wear makeup or whatever, but I have a, I have a feeling I would be the, the strangest looking dad at the parent teacher conference. Just saying. You know what? I'll, I'm just gonna go with the kitty mouth. That's cute. Um, ooh, facial hair. Can do a <laughs> thin mustache. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, oh! Look how cute I am with a beard. Oh. <laughs> I'm like a cute little shoujo dwarf. Alright, no beard. I don't think I'm... Even if I were a man, I don't think I'd be manly enough to grow a beard. Uh, Yeah, we gotta wear glasses. Because I'm a big four-eyed dork. Um, they had my beautiful shoujo eyes. Which I'm very proud of. Those aren't bad. We'll go with those. Um, oh, you can do piercings. Oh, come on. There's no septum piercing, really. You know what? I'll, I'll do the no stud because it's the closest thing. And clothing... I love the kitten suit. Um, little Bergy. <laughs> like how you could just play the game in your underwear if you want. Ooh, that looks like a shirt I would probably wear in real life. Ooh, egg nips. You know what? I think I'm going to go with this because it is the most goth of all the outfits. It's the most, like, consistently black or gray. And then, you know, it has flowers on it, so it, so it shows my sensitive side, too, which I like. Let's see. Shadow or no shadow? Shadow. You know what? We'll, we'll do no shadow because I'm, I'm a cute, clean-shaven daddy. Looking good, Daddy. Oh, what should I name my dad? I always thought if if I were a man, like if I were to transition into becoming a man, I would probably change my name to Caden. Um, cause I actually really like my name. I I I don't know. Um, there aren't that many male names that I I genuinely like. Oh, you know what we can do. We will be Lee. Okay. Nice little reversal. I like the name Lee for a guy. It's kind of gender neutral and cool. Let's be that dad. <laughs> Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. Oh! <laughs> I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Um, the only way your father and I, the only way your mother and I. Um, well, this is Dream Daddy, so I'm going to say your father and I. 
The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent your first two years of your life with sunglasses on. <laughs> nice. Halloween when you were maybe four? Oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Right, yep. Definitely repress that memory. And this is when you... And this was you in your horse phase. <laughs> Dad. I can't get over how adorable my daughter is. I believe you named that plush her horse Sor Sir Horsington the Brave. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. <laughs> nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. The communist manifesto had a chance to back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P. until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Dad, Emma R. has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. Oh, right, Emma P. was the one who... Tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station, pooped her pants during a sleepover. Um... Maybe, maybe she, maybe she pooped her pants? <laughs> that was me. I did that. <laughs> oh. Oh. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R., who isn't Emma P. She never told anyone, though. True blue, that Emma R. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R. later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFriday's. <laughs> And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Dad. Still, I can't drive past McFriday's without gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and pulls out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Aww. I finally decide to break the silence. Uh, this is the day we adopted you. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your father, oh man. He holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen him. He says, it's okay, it's all gonna be okay. He was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss him. Aww. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops, we gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at our old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Hey, remember when I broke the window, <laughs> the back window? We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving man begins to pull away and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So... So what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. 
Nestled in beautiful, scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Um, not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. What a deal. I mean, if sleep weren't for the week. You sleep more than anyone I know. I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. I think it's great. Won't we be close to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Not going to happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you won't have to chase rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Don't you dare. Senior. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. I'm just going to ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. <laughs> Man, all that karate chopping talkered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. Um, you know what? Let's take care of business. We gotta unpack first. As much as I would also enjoy a delicious and healthy ice cream sando right about now, we got to do we got work to do, kiddo. And we need to make it snappy because there are five sealed crates of DVD box sets blocking off the back <laughs> the bathroom and I got to pee real bad. Well, don't let the entire cast of all 13 seasons of Shark Tank but with actual sharks stand in your way. Let's get to it. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is doing its washing and drying and we can both actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! <sighs> Whoa. A handsome clean cut man stands at my door brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Lee. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, but between you and me, she just sprinkled in chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Jo Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well... Thanks for the cookies. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come b And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? <laughs> oh, uh, I meant... Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? Mister, actually. And, er... No, not anymore. He died. Oh. Uh... I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. 
Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look Joseph quizzically. I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. <laughs> hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. <laughs> I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter and Am my daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. Was he flirting with me? He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and a cookie in her hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? <laughs> I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Um, let's give Joseph his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're going to be the best neighbors in the whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. I'd hazard a guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. Why are they so creepy looking? <laughs> we just wanted to uh, return this nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They look exactly like him. They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Well, okay, we're just going to set this plate down on the ground real gentle and back away slowly, right, Dad? Right. That's what we're going to do. The kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. Uh, you know what? Let's get a coffee. That would be my first... You know what, let's get a coffee. That would be the first thing I would want to do. I'm feeling a little sluggish, and coffee seems like the more responsible option than just taking a nap. I'm proud of you. We walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. <laughs> What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home at my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit down on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my personal zone. <laughs> Dad... And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it out on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you just leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! We walk inside. 
The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the wall and patrons lounge around on well-worn-in couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to a little stage. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of dumb. It gets mentioned in a poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, and I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. This guy's, like, really hot. <laughs> so what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and immediately am overwhelmed. I'll have a... Godspeed, you black coffee, iced Tegan, and Sarah, chai, ant word. Uh, you know what? Let's let's do iced Tegan and Sarah. Good choice. I guess he liked that. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Tegan and Sarah are this really awesome Canadian indie band formed in 1995. They were nominated for a Grammy in 2013 and are known for being masters of not only pop hits, but meaningful lyricism. I'm doing the thing again, <laughs> but coming right up. And for you? I'll have uh, a Macchiato de Marco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, medium? Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt Salt's out there making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat at one of the couches. What's his deal? Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyway. Hey! Hey! Scott was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and a guy seems not only cool, but also as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside, and also don't go outside, and also don't talk to people. <laughs> See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks out on the table, and I have a sip. The iced teagle and Vera is delicious. <laughs> Hi, we're new to the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Lee. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guy's opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that Nana Bread a taste if you want us to doing free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate with, uh, I've taught her well. <laughs> we have trained for this day. I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right, yes, that. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. This is amazing. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might be the only one to give you dad... <laughs> I think I might be... <clears throat> well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread. Kennedy's grateful banana bread. Right said banana bread. Oh, right said banana bread. That's such a good name. Oh, he agrees. Like right said Fred, but now it's about banana bread. I think the youngsters would like it, despite not getting it. That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Yeah, right said banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. See? It sounds good when you say it. 
Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Oh, it's Robert Downey Jr. Our eyes meet, just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Uh, let's get some fresh air. Time to soak up all that vitamin T. Make our bones nice and strong. Yeah, our skeletons are going to get so strong, they're going to hop right out of our bodies and crush cars with their bony fingers. <laughs> Amanda, I already have an irrational fear that my skeleton will one day escape this flesh sack and run amok. Please don't encourage it. Right. Sorry. Uh, to the park! Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers in the the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in that stroller over there? Government operative. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up in a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Okay. Ow! <laughs> a frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof! Oh, no! <laughs> I love corgis. A corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Uh. Hello, doggo. Arf, arf! He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with... Neg with... Neg? Nudges my leg <laughs> with his nose. Oh, God, this is the cutest dog. Um, pet the dog, yes. But where do I pet the dog? Head rubs, uh, chin scratches. Dare we try the butt pats? I think we do. I give him the customary pats. The dog loves this. Good call. <laughs> you definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Um, you know, it's, it's a new technique. It's like disc golf, but with my face. Looks like you're winning. Oh. Eggplants are being shot about. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. My name's Brian, by the way. I'm Lee, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi. Your dog's cool. Oh, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. <laughs> she puts it down and heads over to us. This is Daisy. She's reading the brothers Karama Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. Whoa. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no, it's happening. <laughs> Suddenly we're playing Pokemon. Go on, Daisy, tell them about yourself. Um, I... That's my girl. Lee, Amanda, get in there. Amanda, okay, okay. <laughs> um... Well, brag. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. Brian, Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. You lose 15 HP. Oh no, he's beating me. Oh, what's this? You can't switch daughters. Amanda is your only daughter. <laughs> um... Item? Grade card? You pull a wrinkled copy out of a of You pulled a wrinkled copy of Amanda's last grade card out of your back pocket. 
Dad. Awesome grades. Brian loses 25 HP. Brian, you really carry that around everywhere? Ouch. Maybe it is kind of weird. You lose 5 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president, too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. You lose 10 HP. Um, we'll brag again. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. A canoe! We're taking it out next weekend. How is that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Oh, no. Oh, I'm still winning, though. Um... Mm. Child art? You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. Cute! It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 10 HP. You regain 20. Oh my god! Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy. Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. You lose 10 HP. Oh, man. Uh, we'll brag again. Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Brian loses 10 HP. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to da talking Daisy's teachers about having her skip a grade. Even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. You lose 20 HP. <laughs> uh, um... Spelling bee photo. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be her win, her third win in a row. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Daisy here is all... <laughs> Daisy here has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Ma Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Ah, did he have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? Man, I thought I had him. So, I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? Yeah, we live in the cul-de-sac next to the coffee shop. What a coincidence. That's where we live, too. Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye! Brian and Daisy walk further into the park, with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling he was trying to one-up us? Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only ten. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in com comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. Too close to the truth, Dad. Let us never speak of this fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave and Epic Seven Parts by Amanda Kay. We laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Uh, yeah, let's go take a nap. I think we deserve it. As the sunlight is making me real tired. All this sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I get a got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. Oh, that that's hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps coming up behind us. Lee, bro! I turn around and am greeted by my famili by a familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Bro! Bro. Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Amanda, dude, you probably don't even remember me, but you're so big now. 
Hello, and hello, cute baby. Aw, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. Aw, <laughs> I love that baby. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River, River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? I mean, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley is her name. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro, right? Kegstand Craig is a father of three. Kegstand Craig? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. It's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. And bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of a daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. Oh, <laughs> she's blowing a bubble. You jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. Haha, <laughs> I don't know. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards. Catch up. We could do a bro brunch like in the good old days. I want a bro brunch. All right, sure. Sounds great. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why's that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda. He opened up a new jar of marinara sauce, and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. <laughs> Alright, so I think I'm going to pause it right here and pick up from here next time. Uh, I feel like this has probably gone on long enough. But I feel like this is a pretty good introduction to the game and to the dads. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below uh, how you like this game, how you like this series, if um, you're happy that Atomic Tuesday is back and you want to see me make it like a regular thing again. And also let me know in the comments below um, if there's a particular dad in this playthrough you would like me to pursue. Um, I'm just kind of winging it, but if there's like an overwhelming amount of you that want me to date a certain dad, then I will definitely pursue him in this playthrough. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and you want to, and I appreciate you so much, and I'll see you in my next Atomic Tuesday video. Bye, guys! <laughs>